you already have a stack of summer reading to do? Well, if you don't, here's a few ideas. So for this summer, what are you going to be reading? I've already started reading a lot of books and today I'm going to give you a few ideas of what maybe you'd like to read. So here's the top three that are currently on my stack um, besides a bajillion others, but I'm going to just share a few paragraphs from the beginning of each and who knows, maybe you'll add them to your summer reading list. So here's the first one and this is super cool. Check it out. I mean, it's probably backwards, but this is a nook. This is the nook that I won. Yeah. Um, it's super cool. I haven't really had a whole lot of time to spend with it yet, but um, it's got Madeline's Protector on there because I won this from the author, Vanessa Riley. And yeah, I'm excited to play around with this and excited to read her story. So here we go. We're starting it together. You set? Shropshire, England. Iron Country, August 5th, 1821. Should I read this with a British accent? I don't know. It might be kind of cheesy. Okay, here we go. Stop! Thief! Madeline St. James grabbed the coarse sleeve of the man who stole her guineas, but she he shook free and dashed away. Give those back this instant! Mouth open, pulse racing, she stopped her pursuit. A scream bubbled in the pit of her stomach, but she pursed her lips. A St. James never made a public scene or conceded defeat. The thief reached the other side of the vacant courtyard, well ahead of a wagon rumbling up the cobblestone lane. He shot her a toothless grin and traipsed to the main building of Tilford Coaching Inn. Hmm, what's going to happen to her purse? Is she going to get that back? Because you know what? I'm thinking probably not. So that is Madeline's Protector by um, Vanessa Riley. All right. Moving on, whole different genre. We've got Captives by Jill Williamson. Little uh, spec fiction for ya. Let me open her up here. La 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 la. I don't have any on hold uh, music. Okay, whoops. That has a pro prologue, and I went to chapter one. Okay, prologue, May 2088. So we are in the future. Here we go. They're ready for you, Miss Rourke. Sita looked up at the enforcer and took a deep breath. She hugged her compu chart and stood from her seat on the bench, wobbling on her stilettos. The enforcer pulled open the door, a yawning maw that expelled a breath of frigid air into the warm hallway. She tottered toward the entrance, but stopped on the threshold. The auditorium loomed before her, a vast and silent cube. She'd seen it on the color cast before, a purple concrete floor, a field of orange velvet bucket seats, walls painted in gradient, lime green at the bottom to black at the top. A spider's web of pin lights hung under the vast ceiling. Though the room had seemed vibrant and cheerful when she'd seen it on her window in person, everything seemed almost dull and cold. Three tables on raised platforms stretched along the front and side walls, and were covered in lime green tablecloths. The hooded ancients of the Safe Lands Guild sat behind each, uh, each of the tables, six to each wall, their eyes fixed on her like predatory creatures. Miss Rourke? Hmm, I don't think I want to be facing those dudes. How about you? And last but not least, we are going to read from A Touch of Scarlet. This is by Eva Marie Mont. And um, I read her first one, this is the second, but I, I don't think you have to read the first one in order to get into the second one. So this is kind of a hmm, contemporary, but kind of jumps back around in time into other stories. The first story jumped back into Jane Eyre. I believe this one's jumping back into The Scarlet Letter. So here we go. The Scarlet Letter was going to kill me. Over the past week, I'd been trying to get through its 375 pages of densely packed text, and all I had gained for my efforts was a newfound hatred for 19th century prose. Hawthorne never, e never used seven words if 27 were available, and so far Hester and Dimsdale's forbidden romance wasn't setting off any fireworks in my heart. Not to mention, it was my birthday. The sky was a glorious blue, and I had the keys to the car, so why was I spending the day inside with dreary Nathaniel Hawthorne? Because I'd procrastinated and left my summer reading assignment for the very last minute, this was totally out of character for me. Then again, the entire summer had been out of character. Hmm. 
hmm, got a little bit of mystery going on there. Got to find out why her summer was out of character. And so there you have it. There's three little sneak peeks into three different novels, and you can pick one up, or maybe you have a stack already. And shameless plug here, if you don't have a stack, um, hmm, by the end of June, you could actually add a Heart Deceived, which is my latest release that's coming out. More on that later, and you know what? More on Fun Friday next week. See you then.